Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about respiratory physiology. Now in the respiratory physiology, let's begin with the airway generations. The entire respiratory tract is divided into small small segments which are also called as generations. Now totally the airway was divided into 23 generations. Okay, the number of generations are 23. Starting from trachea till to the alveolar sacs, we have 23 generations or 23 segments. Now, what is the generation 0? Okay, generation 0 is trachea or zone 0 is trachea. So, trachea is generation 0. And what is the last zone? Are the last generation, last generation is alveolar sacs, which is generation 23. Okay. Now, let's divide this entire respiratory tract into mainly two parts based on the function. Now, the first 16 generations, okay, the first 16 generations is called as, are called as conducting zones or conducting airways. The first 16 generations are called as conducting airways. And the last generation that is from generation 17 to 23 okay now these generations are called as the respiratory zone or SNR airways okay now what is the difference you can ask me the conducting zone or the first 16 generations there is no gaseous exchange so only air is getting conducted or air is being conducted but there is no exchange of oxygen or carbon dioxide there is no exchange of gases okay so in this area there is no exchange of gases so it is considered as dead space okay as there is no exchange of gases it is considered as dead space and this conducting zone it ends with what it ends with the terminal bronchioles that is generation number 16 so generation 16 is terminal bronchioles okay now after saying saying that now the next zones from generation 17 to generation 23 these are called as respiratory zone respiratory zone or SNR airways now why it is called as a respiratory zone why because in this area okay starting from respiratory bronchioles alveolar ducts and alveolar sacs in all these areas exchange of gases will takes place okay oxygen carbon dioxide exchange will takes place that's why yes gases exchange is present now all these three together called as respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts and alveolar sacs. All of them together called as acinus. Okay, they together it is called as a acinus. Now if someone comes to you and asks you respiratory zone starts with what? Respiratory zone starts with respiratory bronchioles. And in respiratory bronchioles, is there is any exchange of gases? Yes, there is exchange of gases happens even in the respiratory bronchioles. Okay. Now, let's discuss a few important points about the terminal bronchioles. Okay, so terminal bronchiole, what exactly is the importance of terminal bronchiole? Terminal bronchiole is the last part of conducting zone. Okay, the last part of conducting zone is terminal bronchiole. And this terminal bronchioles, if you can see here, this terminal bronchiole is having a lot of smooth muscle. So, maximum amount of smooth muscles are present in these terminal bronchioles. Now, whenever there is smooth muscle, the smooth muscle can undergo contraction as well as relaxation. So, contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscle will lead to bronchoconstriction and bronchodilation. Okay. So, they regulate the airway resistance. For example, if the airway smooth muscles, if they undergo contraction, if they undergo contraction, now what will happen? There is more resistance for the flow of air. If the airway smooth muscles, if they undergo relaxation, there will be less resistance for the flow of air. Having said that, now on this bronchial smooth muscles here, on this smooth muscles, there are receptors present. Which receptors? Both the sympathetic receptors present as well as parasympathetic receptors present. Now, the sympathetic receptor which is present over here is called as a beta 2 adrenergic receptor. On this airway smooth muscles, there is beta 2 adrenergic receptor present. Now, whenever you stimulate this beta 2 adrenergic receptor, what will happen? Now, the smooth muscles are going to relax. So, relaxation of smooth muscles will cause bronchodilation. So, imagine, now whenever sympathetic nervous system is getting activated in your body, now 
you want more oxygen or less oxygen you want more oxygen simple right whenever the sympathetic nervous system is getting activated in the body you, you like which type of reactions you are going to happen which type of reactions you are going to like you know happen in your body fight or fi flight reactions either you have to fight or you have to flight away from the situation so you need to have more oxygen so if, if you want to get more oxygen the bronchodilation should happen so that's why the sympathetic receptor which is present on the bronchioles is beta 2 adrenergic receptor now stimulation of beta 2 adrenergic receptor will cause bronchodilation bronchodilation will cause flow of more oxygen into the respiratory system okay now there is also parasympathetic receptor which is present on the bronchial smooth muscles what is that parasympathetic receptor sir now the parasympathetic receptor is the m3 muscarinic receptor okay m3 muscarinic receptor now whenever the parasympathetic nervous system is activating in the body parasympathetic nervous system will release acetylcholine now activation of acetylcholine or i should say activation of m3 receptors with the acetylcholine will cause a contraction of the smooth muscles contraction of the smooth muscles so contraction of the smooth muscles will cause bronchoconstriction so sympathetic activity will cause bronchoconstriction with the help of m3 muscarinic receptor okay now let's see the agents that modify the bronchial smooth muscle activity for example here i have given you certain agents which will cause bronchoconstriction and the agents which will cause bronchodilation for example the parasympathetic stimulation of the m3 receptors already just we have discussed if you stimulate the parasympathetic receptors with the help of acetylcholine there will be bronchoconstriction so acetylcholine causes bronchoconstriction or parasympathetic stimulation will cause bronchoconstriction okay histamine okay the release of histamine from the mast cells okay we all know that the mast cells are the source of histamine so what histamine will do bronchoconstriction or bronchodilation it will cause bronchoconstriction even on the smooth muscles there are histamine receptors present h1 h1 receptors are present h1 receptors are the histamine receptors histamine receptors are also present on the bronchial smooth muscles stimulation of the histamine receptors will cause bronchoconstriction just like stimulation of m3 receptors now leukotrienes especially leukotriene b4 leukotriene b4 is the most potent bronchoconstrictor okay so the leukotrienes will cause bronchoconstriction and thromboxin a2 serotonin platelet activating factor all of these are the substances which will cause bronchoconstriction now what are the agents which will cause bronchodilation sympathetic stimulation beta 2 adrenergic stimulation okay beta 2 adrenergic receptor stimulation with the help of norepinephrine will cause bronchodilation we have already discussed that now the circulating beta 2 agonist drugs which are stimulating the beta 2 receptors can also cause bronchodilation and nitric oxide prostaglandins especially prostaglandin e2 and prostacyclin that is pgi2 all of these agents will cause bronchodilation okay these are the agents which are causing bronchodilation okay so on the one side on the on the one side i have discussed about the bronchoconstriction on the other side the agents which are causing bronchodilation okay now let's discuss about a little bit about the asthma okay so asthma is type 1 hypersensitivity reaction what exactly happens in the asthma there is reversible bronchoconstriction okay the patient now suffer, will, will suffer with reversible bronchoconstriction so what exactly happens in asthma let's keep it as simple as possible now see imagine that i am the patient who is suffering with asthma my airways will undergo bronchoconstriction and what are the events which are leading to bronchoconstriction normally in the bronchial tree in the bronchial tree and the respiratory tree there are these cells present which are called as the mast cells mast cells are present okay now on the surface of mast cells which antibodies are there on the surface of mast cells there are ige antibodies present ige antibodies are present okay now whenever dust particles or pollen whenever they enter into the respiratory tract now in certain individuals in certain individuals they will cause cross linking of the ige antibodies see if for the first time if the pollen enters into the body then there won't be any problem for the first time when the first time pollen or dust particles when they enters into the body now antibodies are produced against the pollen 
and these antibodies now where they are present the antibodies are situated on the surface of mast cells and these mast cells are present where in the connective tissue in the bronchial tree now when the same pollen again enters into the body now we are already having the antibodies already the antibodies are produced in the bronchial tree the antibodies are present over the mast cells now when the pollen again enters here into the bronchial tree for the second time what happen now it will cause cross linking of the antibodies now cross linking of the antibodies will cause activation of the mast cells now mast cells what they will release now they will release the histamine histamine is going to be released from the mast cells and this histamine will cause bronchoconstriction reversible bronchoconstriction okay now why we are discussing all these events is because if you know these things if you know this pathophysiological things it will be easy for you to understand the treatment part of the asthma see asthma is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction why because allergic reactions all the allergic reactions are type 1 hypersensitive reactions allergic reactions are anaphylactic reactions are type 1 hypersensitivity reactions okay in asthma what is the problem there is a reversible bronchoconstriction what is the allergen doing allergen here is a it's a pollen right so allergen is going to cross link the ig e antibodies on the surface of mast cells okay we have discussed and whenever the cross linking happen mast cells are going to be activated and the mast cells they will degranulate and release histamine now what this histamine will do histamine is going to act on the histamine receptors will cause bronchoconstriction now how to treat the asthma okay how to treat the asthma sir now we all know there is bronchoconstriction in the asthma so what we have to do as a doctor we have to do bronchodilation we have to dilate the bronchus now how we can achieve that we all know that see this is the bronchus imagine this is the bronchus now on the bronchus there are beta 2 receptors present beta 2 receptors are the sympathetic receptors when you stimulate the beta 2 receptors bronchodilation is achieved so what are the beta 2 agonists the beta 2 agonists are salbutamol salmeterol terbutalin so beta 2 agonists like salbutamol salmeterol terbutalin they will stimulate the beta 2 receptors and will cause bronchodilation simple and we know the parasympathetic receptor which is present on the bronchus is m3 muscarinic receptor now if you stimulate m3 muscarinic receptor bronchoconstriction will happen so what you have to do with the m3 receptor you have to block the m3 receptor see you have to block the m3 muscarinic receptor so that bronchodilation will happen now so what are the m3 muscarinic receptor blockers m3 muscarinic receptor blockers are ipratropium triotropium so ipratropium and triotropium are m3 receptor blockers okay next we have already discussed in the previous slide that what is the most potent bronchoconstrictor the most potent bronchoconstrictor is the leukotriene especially the leukotriene b4 leukotriene b4 is the most potent bronchoconstrictor so what you have to do with the leukotriene receptors again you have to block the leukotriene receptors which are present on the bronchial smooth muscles so what are the examples of leukotriene receptor blockers leukotriene receptor blockers include montelukast okay montelukast Zafir Lukast, Monte Lukast and Zafir Lukast, both of them are leukotriene receptor blockers. When you block the leukotriene receptors, bronchodilation will happen. Okay, now let's see a few more important drugs which will be used in the treatment of asthma. Already we have discussed beta two agonists can be used in the treatment of asthma, and uh, M two antagonist. Okay, not M two. I should say M three antagonist. Okay, M three receptor. M M three antagonist will be used in the treatment of asthma. There is a protropium, protropium. We have already discussed. And leukotriene LTR. That is a leukotriene antagonist. Leukotriene antagonist or leukotriene blockers, receptor blockers like montelukast and zafirlukast can be used. I have discussed. Now let's talk about the phosphodiesterase inhibitors. What are the examples of phosphodiesterase inhibitors? Theophylline and theobromine. Theophylline and theobromine. What they will do? guys let me tell you imagine here this is the bronchial smooth muscle okay now in the bronchial smooth muscle there is c a m p okay there is c a m p now the c a m p is responsible for smooth 
मजिल रिलैक्सेशन स्मूथ मजिल रिलैक्सेशन ना वेन एवर सी एम पी इज देर फॉर एक्सापल इट मी टेल यू इफ यू स्टिमुलेट द बेटा टू रिसेप्टर्स सी ए एम पी लेवल्स इन द सेल इंक्रीजेस ना दि सी एम पी विल काज स्मूथ मजिल रिलैक्सेशन दट स्मूथ मजिल रिलैक्सेशन विल काज ब्रांको डेलेशन नार्मल दिस इज समथिंग नार्मल इफ यू एक्टिवेट द बेटा टू रिसेप्टर्स इंट्रासेलर सी एम पी लेवल इंक्रीजेस द सैक्लिक एम पी इज गोइंग टू काज स्मूथ मजिल रिलैक्सेशन वेन स्मूथ मजिल रिलैक्सेशन हेपन दिल बी ब्रांको डेलेशन नार्मली But the CAMP is kept on inhibited by or the CAMP levels is decreased by phosphodiesterase (PD). So phosphodiesterase is what they are doing. They are decreasing the CAMP levels. When the CAMP level decreases, what happens? Smooth muscle is not going to be relaxed. Smooth muscle contraction is going to happen. When smooth muscles are contracted, there will be bronchoconstriction. So what do you, what we have to do now? We have to inhibit the phosphodiesterase. When you inhibit the phosphodiesterase, CAMP levels will be elevated in the cell for a lot of time. CAMP will cause, will make sure the CAMP will make sure smooth muscle relaxation. When smooth muscles are relaxed, bronchus will be dilated. Bronchodilation is achieved. So phosphodiesterase inhibitors like theophylline and theobromine are used in the treatment of asthma. Now next, lipooxygenase inhibitors like ziluton can be used in the treatment of asthma. Now, what is the mechanism here? Lipooxygenase is an enzyme which is needed. Okay, lipooxygenase is an enzyme which is needed for the production of leukotrienes. Okay, for the production of prostaglandins, we need cyclooxygenase. But for the production of leukotrienes, the most important enzyme is lipooxygenase. So, whenever you inhibit this enzyme, lipooxygenase. Now, there is no leukotriene production in the body. Whenever the leukotrienes are not there, bronchus will be dilated. So, ziluton is the lipooxygenase inhibitor. Okay. Now, next, mast cell stabilizers. We all know that in asthma, what happened to the mast cells? Mast cells are activated. Mast cells are going to degranulate. Mast cells will release the histamine which will cause bronchoconstriction. Now, Mast cell stabilizers. When you stabilize the mast cells, degranulation does not happen. When degranulation is not happening, histamine is not getting released. So whenever there is no histamine, bronchodilation will happen. Okay, bronchoconstriction is not going to happen. Rather, bronchodilation will happen. So mast cell stabilizers include sodium chromoglycolate. Okay, sodium chromoglycolate is a mast cell stabilizer. And also we have discussed that on the surface of mast cells, there is an antibody present which is called as IgE antibody. So cross-linking of IgE antibodies will cause mast cell degranulation. So what happened is we have made an antibody against the IgE antibodies. Now in the pharmaceutical industries we have produced, we have manufactured an antibody which is anti-IgE antibodies. Now these monoclonal antibodies whatever we have produced, these antibodies they will go and attack the IgE antibodies so that these IgE antibodies they will no longer be activated, they will no longer be cross-linked with the allergen or pollen. So, Ig antibodies are neutralized by the monoclonal antibodies which we have produced in the industry, pharmaceutical industry. The name of that monoclonal antibody is omalizumab. Okay, see omalizumab, monoclonal antibody, MAB, anything which ends with the MAB. Okay, mon it is monoclonal antibody. So, anti-Ig antibody is omalizumab. Okay, so with this we have completed what are the different types of drugs which can be used in the treatment of asthma. Hope the video is helpful. See you in the next video. Thank you.